Buenos dias and good day. Um, my name is Alan Appel, and uh, today I want to bring you a presentation about Mexican food. I have spent a good deal of time in Mexico, traveling to most of the major cities and uh, a lot of the smaller ones as well, including some of the Indian villages, which is a, it's a very fascinating country, very rich in history. Today we'll uh, discuss the uh, traditional Mexican food dishes, uh, some Mexican eating patterns, uh, complex Mexican mentality, we'll get some insight there into how Mexicans think, traditional health beliefs, and current food practices in Mexico and the United States. This will be followed by nutrition concerns about the Mexican diet and how the Mexican diet can be improved. The uh, Mexican history is a very long one, and in the uh, ancient Mayans and Aztecs were very sophisticated cultures. They ate primarily uh, corn, beans, squash, potatoes, cactus, cocoa, and some game, uh, basically a vegetable-based uh, uh, diet. Uh, then the Spanish came in in the uh, 16th century and introduced a lot of meat products such as beef, pork, chicken, goats, sheep, cheese, milk, and rice, and, uh, and, and overlaid their values onto the uh, traditional Mexican culture. And then there's, of course, Tex-Mex, which is a type of Mexican food uh, in the United States. It, it tends to use more cheese and meat and flour tortillas. Here are some of the uh, popular Mexican dishes. Uh, first off, we have to talk about the tortilla. The tortilla is the bread of Mexico. It is a unleavened, uh, corn-based, uh, traditionally corn-based, now they have flour ones, uh, flat bread that was uh, ground on um, uh, the stone ground and then uh, patted by, by hand into these uh, flat discs that you see in the back. Um, the, the tortillas is used to cover uh, and uh, wrap a, a lot of uh, Mexican dishes, in particular the enchilada, which is a rolled up tortilla with uh, fillings like meat and vegetables um, and can be covered with uh, chili sauce. Uh, just looking at it makes me hungry. Uh, then there's the taco. Uh, it's a fold. Uh, to fold a tortilla with uh, different fillings such as a lettuce, a ground beef, um, and vegetables. And it's a, it's a light meal and um, very nutritious and, and uh, fun to eat. Uh, the burrito is a great standby. Um, uh, you take a larger uh, tortilla and you wrap it uh, around fillings like beans, rice, and uh, ground beef. And you can see here some refried beans and uh, rice in the in the photo. The tamale is uh, usually for more uh, uh, festival days uh, and holidays because it takes a lot more work to, to prepare, but it is a uh, spiced meat mixture covered with uh, cornmeal dough and then wrapped in corn husks. And uh, again, fun to eat and fun to unwrap. The chili relleno is um, typically mincemeat or, or cheese stuffed uh, in a roasted pepper and uh, coated with flour. Um, another uh, delicious meal. Uh, mole is um, dark spicy chocolate sauce and it's not sweet like chocolate that we might think of but it is uh, it has fruit and chili peppers and cinnamon and cumin and, and is very uh, uh, very delicious uh, addition to uh, any of the Mexican meals. Next, we have a churro, which is a long ridge, light dough, deep fried pastries, and they are delicious. They're fun to eat at festivals and uh, as, a, as a great little snack. Uh, however, they are deep fried, so one has to keep that in mind. Now, here we go with pan dulce. Pan dulce are Mexican pastries, and they have a lot of them, and uh, they are just delicious. And one after the other, they're they're ornate and fun to eat and very good. And then their beverages. Uh, horchata is a uh, rice, cinnamon, and sugar drink. And again, delicious. Um, and uh, then there's hibiscus tea, which we'll talk about later. Coffee, tequila, of course, and then Mexican beer, which is 
some of the best beer in the world. The traditional eating pattern, and this one is uh, from Oaxaca, uh, which is in far south of Mexico, and uh, typically 7 a.m. Uh, before going to work, uh, coffee and hot chocolate with some pastry or bread. Um, Nine o'clock, I have a, maybe a small burrito or a couple of eggs. Uh, then at 12 a.m., a light sandwich. 5 p.m. is the big meal, that's comida. And uh, it's a large meal that, um, uh, and typically the family gets together and uh, enjoys uh, uh, a, a nice uh, meal with, with everybody getting together. Um, then there's a 7 to 8 p.m. is a bit of coffee, tea, cocoa, uh, often with bread, uh, before going to sleep. I have uh, lived in Mexico and worked with Mexican people uh, all my life, and uh, they are some of the most hardworking, warmest, friendliest, most hospitable people on the planet. They're wonderful. Uh, there are some stereotypes about them, and one is that they appear happy, easygoing, and not very complicated. That's the farthest thing from the truth. Um, I have a quote here from Octavio, Octavio Paz, who is uh, one of the foremost um, intellectuals of Mexico, and, and uh, he writes, uh, The Mexican is a person who shuts himself away to protect himself. His face is a mask and so is his smile. In his harsh solitude, which is both barbed and courteous, everything serves him as a defense. Silence and words, politeness and disdain, irony and resignation. He writes uh, this in his book, uh, The Labyrinth of Solitude, and that depicts, that term, The Labyrinth of Solitude, depicts the Mexican mind. So the uh, Mexicans tend to be far more complex deep down than uh, given credit for by a lot of people who don't know them well. Uh, this inner complexity uh, may originate from the uh, repeated treachery and assaults Mexicans have experienced throughout their history. Um, the Spanish were able to destroy and subjugate the sophisticated Aztec and Mayan societies. Even today, there is significant discrimination in Mexico of those who claim uh, Spanish blood over the indigenous Indian population. While uh, the people are honest and gov the governments have been corrupt, uh, Mexico's neighbor, the United States, is a rich country with a GDP, uh, gross domestic product, per capita of $57,000 uh, uh, plus, while Mexico's is only $8,000 plus. Um, the, um, in the the um, in in 1846, uh, the government was such in such chaos. It had four presidents, six uh, war ministers, and 16 finance ministers in only one year. Um, so the Mexicans have to, have to deal with a lot of adversity, and um, so it's good to be aware of this when interacting with them. Uh, and it's, it's good to know that uh, of their possible sensitivities. But most important is to treat all people with respect as valuable individuals rather than as a member of some preconceived tribal grouping, which people tend to do around the world, in my experience. Mexico has a rich tradition of following ancient Aztec and Mayan practices, uh, health practices, um, with the results of the 16th century conquest uh, by the Spanish superimposed on them, uh, which changed a lot, but there is still a great deal of Indian um, uh, medicine being practiced in Mexico. Um, in the remote southern state of Chiapas, where Indian villages flourished, I experienced a, a traditional Catholic church where the Catholic bishop was allowed to deliver a mass, but only once a month. The rest of the time, about 10 Mayan-oriented uh, medicine men sat cross-legged on the pine needle-covered floor. There were no pews, uh, treating individuals with uh, traditional methods like sacrificing a chicken and applying blood to the patient. Meanwhile, statues of the Virgin Mary looked on. And this is a picture of uh, Chamula in the Chiapas. 
and you can see the church there. By the way, I'm not sure how this picture was taken because uh, when I was uh, there in the Chiapas, uh, you could not take pictures. Uh, it was viewed by the natives as stealing their soul or some such. And uh, uh, the week before, a uh, Frenchman came by and took some pictures and uh, he was his camera was taken away from him and smashed. So you do so at your peril. But this is a view of a typical market, so maybe it was okay to be this far back from the church. But the Indians do not like to have their pictures taken. Uh, many plants, um, such as herbs, uh, are used for flavoring food and also for medicine. And this has been going on since ancient Mayan times. Um, the, uh, here's one, which is called a hoja santa, which is sacred leaf. Uh, is used for making tea, wrapping tamales, and it's said to cure headaches, among other medicinal uses. The epizote uh, tea or, um, is added to beans uh, for flavoring, and uh, it is said to clean the stomach. Um, it also is a, known as a cure for worms. Uh, Rue tea uh, is brewed and uh, is also used to cure headaches. Then there's tamarind. Uh, it's made uh, into a cold drink and uh, it also improves digestion and uh, is said to cure uh, sore throats. Hibiscus tea is uh, cleans the uh, stomach again and uh, also is a strong antioxidant. Antioxidants work against aging um, I actually consume uh, hibiscus tea every morning um, because of its uh, antioxidant properties. It has the highest antioxidant content of over 280 common drinks. Uh, let's take a look at the food practices in Mexico and the United States. Um, Everybody has a family life that's important to them, but it seems to be even more so with the with Mexicans. Um, meals are a time when Mexicans like to get together, and uh, it creates uh, stronger family ties and uh, identity with the um, by eating Mexican food, identity to the Mexican culture. Um, what is a bit of a paradox is that uh, Mexican dishes are some are valued, but they're somehow seen as less healthy than American food, which is, of course, not the case depending on which foods are consumed. Uh, shopping for healthier foods like fruit and vegetables is, is easier in Mexico. Um, in Mexico, buying and preparing food is done daily uh, from sellers that people know. And uh, it's more of a pattern and more of a usual thing to go out and, and buy from people. And there's, there's less t temptation to buy uh, processed food and junk food. Uh, it, it, most of what is consumed and bought is uh, uh, whole foods, nat more natural foods, and uh, this is an important process and part of the, the culture in Mexico. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case in the United States. Um, Mexicans tend to mo eat most of their meals at home. Uh, unfortunately, this is changing as Mexican Americans eat more fast food um, and restaurant food. How do you solve the overweight problem that uh, Mexicans are experiencing uh, both in the United States and uh, in Mexico? Um, most Mexican food is very healthy, especially beans, rice, vegetables, and fruit. The problem is that Mexicans don't eat enough of these foods. The U.S. Department of Agriculture recommends to choose fruits, vegetables, grains, and they include dairy and protein foods, to get the most nutrition. They also say limit saturated fat, which is in animal products, uh, sodium, and uh, which is in a lot of uh, processed foods, and added sugars, which is in soda pop. A Mexican diet can be improved by eating more fruit and vegetables. Also reducing or eliminating salt, sugar, and especially oil will improve Mexican diets. Dishes like chimichanga, which are burritos that are deep fried in oil, churros, which are pastries that are deep fried in oil, and chile rellenos, 
uh, which are laced with cheese, are best substituted with dishes like beans, rice, and veggie burritos. The more calories you eat, the more weight you may gain. Which type of food makes you full with the least number of calories? Your stomach will be full when you eat potatoes, rice, beans, fruits, and vegetables. It will be almost empty when you eat the same number of calories of oil, cheese, and meat. Take a look at this chart. To make you feel full when you eat oil, cheese, and meat, it will take a great many more calories to consume, uh, which will make you make, gain weight if you eat this type of food. At, at the right side, you'll see potatoes, rice, and beans, fruits and veggies, which these graphics of the stomach are showing to be you're full with that same number uh, of 500 calories in, um, in what you're eating. So, eat your delicious Mexican meals, meals of rice, beans, fruit, and vegetables to feel satisfied, lose weight, and be healthy. What follows are the um, footnotes, and I'll just go through those one at a time, and they can be picked up. Uh, you can stop freeze frame if you want. Um, adios.